You guys, how's it going? Happy Monday. So today we've got a class that is kind of one of the latest topics that I've been extremely interested in ever since I started learning about it and really digging in and realizing, wow, this is a really big deal. And I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people aren't talking about it and it should be, especially when it comes to fertility, when it comes to uh, reproductive health and that not only of yourself, but of your future child. So a lot of the things that I'm gonna be talking about affect the baby in utero, as well as the children in the home spouses, partners, all of that. Um, so what we're going to be talking about is xenohormones and if and how they affect fertility. Now this will affect every single person. This information, I should say it this way, will help every single person who's on their fertility journey. Um, this is something that everybody should be aware of. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, for those of you who, who've never seen one of my videos before, my name is Heather Rodriguez. I'm a natural fertility specialist. What that means is I'm an herbalist and nutritionist who has specialized in reproductive health for the last 13 years. Um, I help women and couples prepare for healthier pregnancies, overcome and support fertility issues, whether or not they're preparing for medical fertility treatments or going all natural, does not matter. Um, love you all. So, all right, so let's jump right in. So xenohormones. So these are, the definition of a xenohormone is a substance that's not found in nature that is, has a hormonal effect on the body, right? So, um, I just made this today. I'll, um, I have the recipe and how to do it. I'll be putting it up on, on Instagram, um, but it'll help with what we're talking about. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so there are substances found in nature that mimic hormones in the body. Um, they will do this to both men and women. Um, they are absorbed through the skin over time. They can be inhaled and they can be ingested. So you can kind of see kind of where this is headed. Um, and we all come into contact with xenohormones on a daily basis. It's just some of us are coming into contact with them more than others, depending on the types of products that we have in our home, the types of products that we're using and so forth. Um, they're like one of the best ways to avoid them is to avoid products that contain them. So tomorrow I'm going to go into greater detail into the chemicals, how they um, like specifically what they are and the effects that they have. But today I kind of want to go over what xenohormones are and how to know if you are being affected by them. Um, so if you're preparing for pregnancy, if you have little ones, any of that, this is super important. So how xenohormones affect fertility. The main one we're gonna be talking about is xenoestrogens. So xenoestrogens have a very strong estrogenic effect on the body. And what that means is they will go to the receptor sites and they will stimulate that receptor site. And they do this in a very powerful, strong way. They do it stronger than our own personal estrogen does the stimulating effect, and it's much stronger than like a phytoestrogen food or herb, um, which will stimulate it very slightly. The other thing that they do is they stimulate the formation of more estrogen receptor sites. How crazy is that? So they're causing more receptor sites for themselves to go and stimulate more estrogenic effect. So you can see like the snowball effect that could happen from all of this. Um, they also inhibit the liver's ability to excrete and get rid of excess estrogens. So again, we're compounding the snowball effect. So they're very powerful in their action. They can also block other receptor sites, other hormonal receptor sites. So what that means is if we've got a progesterone receptor site, they can go into that receptor site and block that progesterone from, um, from meeting its receptor site. And same with testosterone. So this is how we're getting low progesterone. This is how we're getting low testosterone in men. Like I said before, this affects both men and women. Whew, right? Um, so they are going to be altering how, how your hormones are being produced, what's being um, stimulated and secreted. So they have a very strong effect. So this is why I'm kind of passionate about this because I ran into this multiple times per day. There's so many fertility issues that this is one of the underlying layers that we work on um, because you can tell, and here's how you can tell. So um, here are some of the signs of estrogen dominance that we, that we see and run into. So a lot of fertility issues have them. Anytime that there's something growing in the body that shouldn't be there. So for instance, endometriosis, um, PCOS, ovarian cysts, uterine fibroids, all of those are situations where, where growth is being stimulated. Now estrogen in itself, naturally in our body, is not a bad thing. It's a great thing. It serves an amazing purpose. In the first part of our cycle, it's stimulating the growth of the uterine lining and it um, helps to thicken that. And so it's preparing for implantation. Then once our progesterone starts going up after ovulation, 
the estrogen kind of chills out a little bit and the progesterone is maintaining that uterine lining because you don't want it to keep growing and growing and growing. It's going to be way too thick and too much. Um, so it has a place and estrogen does a lot of other things besides that. But just, just an example of how it grows, ha helps things to grow. Um, so some other signs are PMS, uh, breast tenderness, uh, midsection fat gain, inability to lose weight in a certain area. So the midsection fat gain, you'll see this in men as well. Um, because if they have too much estrogen, a lot of times their testosterone will be low because of what the excess or the um, xenoestrogens are doing to the receptor sites. Something to consider there. Um, heavy periods, clotty periods, sign um, low progesterone, like you have a test, you have signs of low progesterone, um, maybe your fertility charting and your temperature is not continually, continuously rising. Also, um, decreased libido and bloating. Now, bloating can be caused by a lot of different things. So don't, you know, if nothing else checks off on this list and you're like, oh, I'm bloated, I must be estrogen. There's a lot of reasons for bloating. Um, so tomorrow we'll, I'll be covering the sources of xenohormones. Um, very simple solutions. That's the great thing about all this. Because a lot of times, you know, when you start talking about this, you kind of can get freaked out. And you're like, oh, my God, they're everywhere. And this is what they do. So many solutions for you. We're going to go over that tomorrow. If you don't want to wait, um, you can download my free guide that I just finished. I'm so excited. I've been working on this for weeks. It's called The Non-Toxic Home, A Quick Guide to Creating a Healthy Home for Fertility, Pregnancy, and Family. Um, you can get that at nontoxicfertility.com. I'll also have a link below where you can go ahead and download that. It's completely free. And that goes into greater detail in all of these topics that I'm talking about. Um, it goes from the causes, what they're found in, to the solutions, um, and what I, what you know, my um, suggestions. So I hope you found today's topic helpful. Know that we will jump right into solutions in the coming videos. Um, so thanks for joining me. Thanks, guys. Hope you all have a really good day. If you have any questions, I will stay on here for a quick second. Um, but I film my videos like that so that I can use them um, elsewhere. <laughs> Just, you know, you're like, she's teaching a class, and then all of a sudden she starts talking to us. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. So I forgot. So I, this will be posted later. So what I made with this, this is a fertility, or this is a, um, not fertility, I'm calling this the estrogen shield. This is an essential oil blend that I made that just has um, oils in it that help to um, support the endocrine receptor sites with plants so that the um, phytoestrogen, the xenoestrogens are not able to go into those receptor sites as much. So I call it estrogen shield. Um, that'll be up on my Instagram, the recipes on there. But I just love simple solutions. Um, Laura, I'm so glad you found it helpful. That's awesome. And here I can type in here. I'll put the link in here for you guys if you want to get that guide. There we go. There. So you could just co uh, copy and paste that. Um, and that will take you to the page where you can get it downloaded. Awesome, guys. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I'll see you all again tomorrow.